This is the filter slot or the filter cabinet that I recommend to basically all of my clients. It is the April Air 2516. And it's not because I get paid by April Air to say this. It is because it is the biggest filter slot or filter cabinet that you can buy. It's 31 inches by 28 inches uh, is the filter size. And I believe that the cabinet itself is even bigger than that. As you can see here, the hole on the inside matches up with that cabinet on the left here. And then also it's not all the way out to the edge here. The hole is only this big right here. So I manufactured these custom transitions like by hand out of sheet metal with just some shears and some sheet metal that you buy bulk at the big box store. And then we made this custom transition. It's not a custom. This is a plenum that you can buy at any duct uh, supply store. This is my parents' system, like I mentioned, and I have a video uh, forthcoming about all the cool things that they did to pimp out this system. They, I helped design this thing, and then we had Brent Ridley of H&M Services come out and do the uh, install. Uh, Mario on his team was in charge of all that. So the reason that this size is so important is because they publish a uh, they publish a filter pressure drop chart that looks like this. And we like this. You always want to find something that looks like this when you're buying uh, a filter like this because it'll tell you what the pressure drop is per the filter that you're looking at. The one that we're looking at here, if it was a MERV 16, it would be the 516. And if we're moving two and a half tons uh, of air in the air handler, that's 1,000 CFM. Um, through that, it's going to have a pressure drop of 0 0.09. That is beautiful. Anything 0.1 or less is awesome. Pressure drop is like a blockage inside of your uh, blood system. So it's just like that. Uh, thinking of blood pressure and static pressure is the same leads you to a lot of the same conclusions. And we just want to reduce the blood pressure. We want to reduce the static pressure as much as possible. If I ran 2000 CFM through the same thing, it would actually more than double the static pressure. And in fact, they recommend this uh, MERV 16 up to 2600. You can't even buy an air handler that's a residential system that runs 2600 CFM of air. So that's a good thing. Now, the problem comes in where we have a system that is not this that gets put in. And let me show you what this actually uh, is. So what I just saw on uh, one of my client calls here is one of these. This is a Lennox product. It's called Healthy Climate Solutions. Um, and they come in MERV 11, MERV 13, MERV 16. They're five inch thick filters, which sounds better than the four inch thick April airs. Um, and it has this you know, hold in place thing, it's got gaskets and it's airtight and blah, 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 all the nice things. But um, we looked at this uh, performance data and what you want to find is the filter air resistance, page seven. So we're just going to skip down to page, page seven. And the reason that I want to teach you this is because my client had a professional HVAC company come and tell him like, oh, we got you covered. You want MERV 16 filtration? We know how to do that. And they came and they installed this thing which is an HC, let's see, it wasn't that one. It was this one up here, HCF 16-16. That's an HCF 16 by 25 filter cabinet. Uh, so the filter size is 16 inches by 25 inches by five inches deep. Uh, and it runs a MERV 16 filtration rating. That's a 95% capture rate of big particles and small particles in a single pass through that filter. That's really nice. But when you look at the rating for 2000 CFM, which is what we found out his air conditioner actually is, a five ton air conditioner, 2000 CFM, uh -uh, not recommended for that filter size. And then I was like, okay, well, he said, what if I just downgrade that filter? If it's too stressful for that system, what if I go to a MERV 13? or a MERV 11. Neither of those is recommended for that airflow either, right? So now we just know we have to just get a whole new filter slot. You have to take that thing out, cut it out, throw it away, and then you're gonna have to get something. And my you know, thing is like, hey, if you're gonna get something, once you get something that's gigantic, then you can do whatever you want with it. At that point, we could use this same pressure drop chart and we could see that 
if we ran uh, 2000 CFM through a MRF 16 at the big size, that 31 by 28 size, we can get a pressure drop of 0.21. That's not like beautiful, but that's really good. If we ran a MRF 13 through it, we could get a pressure drop of 0.13. And here's something that's really interesting that I think is worth looking at. For, of all of these MERV 13s, this right here is a MERV 13. Let's see, way up here, MERV 13, all the way down to here, MERV 13. All of these are 0 0.35, 0 0.31, 0 0.37, 0 0.37, 0 0.31. The only one that actually works to help your system move air is this gigantic uh, 31 by 28 filter. The, the 516, or excuse me, 513 is what it's called in this uh, lineup. So again, 31 inch by 28 inch by four inch thick. That's really, really big. And yeah, you're gonna need to make these custom transitions, but it just becomes worth it because you have the ability to put whatever kind of filtration in there you want, and then you can run your air handler all the time if you wanna get multiple passes and use a MERV 13 because you get the same filtration level if you do multiple passes in an hour with a MERV 13, as if you do a MERV 16 and you do one pass per hour, which would be circulate mode on like, you know, 30 minutes out of each hour, I want the air handler to run. And it just puts all the air in the house through the filter one time and we get 95% capture. So I hope that that is interesting uh, to people. Keep, make sure you keep an eye on this stuff because what an HVAC professional is gonna think through and plan through and analyze before they just start installing stuff in your house, they just don't, like, don't be mad at them but have some sympathy for the fact that they are completely overworked. They're generally working in attics and crawl spaces, not places where you would want to do work. And they just don't get asked to put this level of attention to a lot of things. So if you care enough to watch this channel, you should probably care enough to just ask, hey, what are you going to put in there? And can I see the details on that? Or at the very least, I'll just look it up myself and find out what it, what it looks like. Um, so read through the manuals, learn to, how to understand this stuff. Comment below if you have anything else to add about filters. Like and subscribe. Tune in next time.